Hi, my name is Emma aka Midsummer Knits and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make videos about knitting and fiber arts content. For the most part, this video in particular is going to be a little bit more applicable to broader genres. I just wanted to make a video talking about how I make my TikToks and Reels and sort of my perspective on how you can be successful in creating Reels and other tips that I have. I do want to say this video will be geared more towards fiber artists in particular, but I also think that these tips can apply pretty broadly across different niches. So even if you aren't a fiber artist or that's not the main thing you post about on your account, I do think a lot of these tips will still apply to whatever your niche is as well. My sort of credentials here are that I have been posting on Instagram for about a year and a half and have gained over 20,000 followers, mostly from my reels. I have not been quite as successful on TikTok. I only have around 3.5K on there, but I actually do have a second TikTok account where I post about Taylor Swift and I have over 10,000 followers on there. So I do think I have some sense of how you can be successful in both of these platforms and I'm definitely working to grow my TikTok account as well. If you do, guys do wanna go check me out on there and help me to hit my goal of hitting 10,000 followers eventually, my username is just Midsummer Knits, so you can go check me out and give me a follow over there. I've also had a few reels go viral at this point in time. I have had at least four, I think, that have over a million views, which is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. Like, that is insane that so many people are seeing something that I posted online. And I feel incredibly lucky that I've had Reels go viral in this way. But I do think that hard work, consistency, and planning can definitely do a lot in terms of helping you to go viral or just be successful on Reels and TikTok in general. So I did want to come on here and talk a little bit about some of my tips and tricks that can help you guys be successful as well. So the first thing I wanted to touch on about this topic is the fact that you truly do not have to make TikToks or Reels if you don't want to. I will sometimes see people complaining about, oh, I have to post TikToks or Reels for my small business nowadays. And while I do think that posting TikToks and Reels is going to help you to be successful online, I also think that especially for a lot of fiber artists, we aren't really in this craft to make money. We're really mainly doing it for fun and to share our work with people online. And if you do not want to gain followers or go viral and you just don't enjoy the process of like filming or editing reels, then I don't think you have any need to actually create reels. I really do enjoy the process of video editing, which is why I have a YouTube channel as well as posting short form content on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube as well. So in that aspect of it, I think that it is really fun to kind of be a little bit creative with coming up with reels and just sit down and edit them. That being said, I also do want to sort of grow my platform online and that has something that I've been working on for the past year and a half. I think it's really helpful as a knitwear designer or, you know, crochet, whatever sort of designer you might be to have a platform and to be able to showcase your patterns and designs on that platform. And while I am still working at becoming a designer, I think that even just starting to post and gain some followers is a good step if I want to be successful as a designer. So that has been sort of my goal in terms of posting and trying to gain this following is to hopefully gain more followers, gain more subscribers who are just going to be interested in my work and interested in seeing what designs I put out. That has been sort of my main end goal in my mind for quite a while. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, I hope that you're still here because you are interested in posting TikToks and Reels and just sharing your perspective as a fiber artist. Maybe you have a goal to gain followers for a specific reason, or maybe you just want to post online and share your work with friends and followers. If that's the case, then the first thing I actually want to touch on is a question that I got asked on my Instagram. I did post about the fact that I was making this video and wanted to see if people had specific questions that they wanted me to address or anything that they thought I should touch on. And one of the questions I got, which I think also is just an important question to talk about when you're talking about short form content in general, was asking about repurposing content for different short form platforms, as in Instagram Reels, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts is the sort of newest short form platform that has come up. I wanted to touch on this because I think this is actually such an interesting topic and one that I have learned about a lot in the past year and a half as I've been posting more reels and TikToks related to my fiber arts. I have really found that posting on reels versus TikTok, I feel like you really do need to take a different approach to it. And I do think that you can reuse content across the different platforms, but you do need to be smart about how you're doing it. So the biggest difference that I have seen in terms of what will do well on Instagram versus on TikTok is that generally Instagram is going to stay more true to its sort of roots as a photo sharing app. And what I mean by that is that I feel like a lot of the things that will do well on, on Instagram is going to be a lot more polished and sort of aesthetically pleasing content where you are kind of showing a more idealized version of creation and what you have made, which I think is sort of true to its roots as a photo sharing app. I think that most people view Instagram in this way where you 
are going to be sharing more of a highlight reel and just kind of like the best moments from your life. Versus on TikTok, people tend to be a lot more authentic. People tend to just talk about whatever they want to talk about. And they will still post like cute aesthetic like videos sometimes, but I think that TikTok is going to be a lot more of a place where you want to be authentic and just share your struggles, what you've been working on, and just be totally honest over there. That being said, I will still post these sort of like aesthetically pleasing videos that I make for Instagram Reels on TikTok because I have found that those can do well sometimes. But when it comes to more sort of basic videos that I make for TikTok where I'm just talking about things, lip syncing, stupid audios, etc. I will sometimes post those on Instagram and they will just tend to not do as well as the more sort of like high effort edited videos that I usually post on Instagram. So that is my biggest tip when it comes to cross posting content. I think all the content that you make for Instagram, you should post on TikTok, but for some of the content that you post on TikTok, if it's a little bit more low effort or casual, you might not want to post that on Instagram. I do think it's good to experiment and try out posting things on both platforms. When it comes to YouTube Shorts, which is the sort of newest short form platform, I'm definitely still trying to get a grasp on what does well over there. Sometimes I will post something and it'll get like 10 views, and other times I'll post something and it'll go viral. So the videos that I have seen that tend to perform better on YouTube Shorts are going to be more sort of YouTube style storytelling videos where you are doing like a vlog or some sort of process video where you're walking a viewer through what you're making. I found that that has done better for me on YouTube Shorts and those have been the sort of styles of video that I've had go viral. I am definitely still experimenting and trying to figure out what my posting strategy will be for YouTube Shorts. At the moment, I'm kind of just posting whatever on there, but that's what I've found tends to do the best. With all of this in mind, there are a few different types of content that I see as sort of like the main categories of videos you can make to post on TikTok or on Instagram. And again, keeping in mind the strategy that I talked about when it comes to TikTok versus Reels, I will try and make the, all these types of videos and then we'll post them on different social medias depending on where I think that they fit best. So the first type of content that I wanna to touch on is content that is going to be using trending audios. So there are also in my mind sort of two subcategories within trending audios. The first one is to just post lip syncing videos. So for this case, this is usually going to be more focused on TikTok for me because I feel like these types of audios don't really do as well on Instagram Reels, but it will usually be sort of an audio talking about some sort of struggle, some sort of specific situation that you can apply to your specific niche. And a lot of cases I will just literally do a very simple lip syncing video of me knitting and lip syncing to this audio and then we'll put a caption over it. Funnily enough, one of the Instagram Reels I had go viral was one of these lip syncing videos. So sometimes they will do well on different platforms and I will still post some lip, lip syncing videos on Instagram Reels as well. But I will say I tend to keep these more to TikTok because I just feel like they're a little bit more casual. With trending audios, you can also post more sort of polished edited videos. I will typically use trending audios when I do sort of like project process videos where usually I'm just showing a few clips of me working on a project and then showing the completed project. I have seen this type of video do well on both Instagram and TikTok for other people. For me myself, I haven't had these video type of videos do incredibly well in the past, but they have usually been like a pretty solid thing that I can post and you know get some views on. Another very basic type of video you can post, which I will usually use a trending audio for, is just a video showing your hands knitting or crocheting or whatever your craft is and then putting an audio over it. This is another example of a type of content where I have I've seen other people go mega viral for posting this sort of content, but I myself have never been super su successful in it. I will still post these videos because they're super low effort and because I feel like it just doesn't really hurt to post these videos and you know have some people view your account or view your video, but I don't really see this type of content as like the backbone of my social media as much. Moving away from trending audios, there are a couple more videos that I think you can make. The first one is more vloggy storytelling types of videos. Usually for these types of videos, I will just get a lot of clips of me doing a specific project or on a specific day. Um, and then I will just do a voiceover talking about my process of making this project or what I did on this day. And I actually love these types of videos. These are some of my favorite types of videos to watch. And I think it's really fun to have videos that tell a bit more of a story, talk about your struggles with making a certain project or on a certain day. And I just think it's really fun. So I have made these a lot. Like I mentioned, these tend to do well on YouTube Shorts. And I've honestly had these types of videos do well on all the different social media platforms because I feel like storytelling is just always going to be something that people are interested in. And the last type of video I wanted to touch on is just videos where you're going to be talking about some specific topic. Usually when I do these talking videos, I will talk while I am knitting because I think it's really helpful to 
show the fact that you are knitting or crocheting or whatever your fiber art is at the start of the video so people know if they would be interested in this video or not. For example, if I am a knitter and I see a video of someone knitting and talking, I'm probably going to stay and watch that video versus if I am not a fiber artist, I might not stay. So I think it's good to sort of show yourself knitting to get the people who are interested in your niche to watch the video. I will usually make these videos talking about something knitting or fiber arts related, just maybe a story that I want to tell or some of my thoughts that I've had related to fiber arts or social media or something. And I usually post these on TikTok the most. A lot of the video types that I talked about in the last segment of this video were talking about using trending audios, so I did want to touch on how you can actually find trending audios. And this is a question that I got on my Instagram as well, so I did want to touch on it. Um, but essentially, the main way that I find trending audios is by actually scrolling on Instagram Reels or TikTok and watching other people's videos and just getting inspiration from them. So this is especially great for me as I am chronically online and cannot stop watching TikTok or Instagram Reels if I try. But I think that it is really important to actually watch other people's TikToks or Reels just to get inspiration to see what is doing well and to actually find these trending audios that you can use. So a lot of times I will just scroll through, especially on Instagram Reels, I will scroll through and see if an audio is trending, it will have a little arrow at the bottom left-hand corner so you can see if an audio is actually doing well at the moment. And especially by watching other people's videos, I can also get a sense of what types of videos are being posted to this audio. So for example, if I did want to do a lip syncing trend, I can see if other people have been lip syncing to this audio and what sorts of captions are posting with it. And that way you just have a pulse on like what is doing well on your app and what you could do for your videos as well. And often I will just save this audio either on Instagram Reels on TikTok and I will come back later on when I want to make a video and will make a video using this audio. Like I said, I will not always use a trending audio. Sometimes I will just put a song over me talking. Sometimes I won't use a song at all. And sometimes, very occasionally, I will just use a song that I want to use, not necessarily one that's trending. But I have found that using a trending audio is going to be really, really helpful in terms of getting eyes on your content. Up next, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like to go viral on these platforms and also any tips that I have for going viral. So the first thing that I want to say about going viral is that I don't think your goal should ever be to go viral when you post a video. I actually think that going viral is not everything that it's cracked out to be, which obviously I know that I myself have gone viral a few times and I'm very lucky to have been in that situation. But what I do want to say is that I feel like people have this perception that as soon as you have a video go viral, you're going to gain a ton of followers, you're going to make a lot of sales if you are selling anything, and you're going to just be like ultra famous on whatever platform it is from then on. And I want to say that that is not really the case, at least for me. Um, I have gained a lot of my Instagram followers from going viral on Reels, so obviously that has been really awesome. I've been able to gain a lot more of a, of a platform on Instagram and it's been really cool. However, I do want to say that a lot of the followers I gained from going viral I think are not like the highest quality of followers. I will post pictures and even though I have 20,000 followers, sometimes I will post pictures that will get like 300 likes or fewer likes than that even. And that is not to say that I'm not thankful for these followers. I think that it is still helpful in terms of maybe like getting brand deals and things to have that large number. But I also think that actually getting interaction in your content is very important. Especially on TikTok, I have found that going viral does not actually usually lead to me gaining that many followers anymore. I think that in the earlier days of TikTok, if you posted a video that went viral, you would immediately gain like thousands of followers. And I don't really think that's the case anymore. I think that the platform has changed a lot. And now a lot of times when you have a video actually go viral on TikTok, unless it's really talking about like your specific page and what people will gain from your page, you're not necessarily going to gain that many followers actually from going viral. So as I mentioned, I don't think that going viral should necessarily be your goal, but it is a cool side effect if you do post a lot of high quality videos that you might occasionally go viral and it can be really exciting. For me, the videos that I've had do consistently well the most are the specific style of video where I am trying on a knit while I am working on it. I actually had a, a video where I am trying on my Luna tee while I was working on it to do well. And that has been a style of video that I have consistently gone back to because I think it's really fun. I don't want to say that I came up with the idea myself, but I hadn't seen someone do that exact style of video before I did it. And so I have continued to make videos in that style and really enjoyed it. But otherwise, I haven't really been able to like target a specific type of video that I think will do well every single time I post it. 
I do want to say one other tip that I have is that if you have a video that you have worked really, really hard on and you believe is a really good video, but you posted it and it didn't do super well, it might be worth it to try posting it again in like a slightly different format or a slightly different edit. This is what I did for my video where I was trying on my sexy blouse while I was making it, which is the first video of this type that I posted. And the first time I posted it, I think it did okay. It got like a thousand likes or something, but I actually ended up doing a slightly different edit to a different audio, which happened to be a trending audio. And that ended up being my first video to go super viral on my account. So I definitely think it's worth giving it another shot if you really do believe in a video. One thing I wanted to touch on really quickly, but I don't think I'll go into too much depth about it, is just talking about how I film and edit my videos. I think that this is going to be a pretty like personal process. Um, you can really just do what works for you, but I do want to talk about what works for me. Depending on the type of video, I will sometimes film videos on my iPhone versus on my DSLR. When it comes to sort of the higher quality videos that I've talked about, such as one where I'm intending to edit it and make it really aesthetic, or my process videos where I'm trying on a piece while I'm making it, I will tend to film these more on my camera because I think that it just looks better if I actually have like high quality footage for those types of videos. But for all my other videos, and honestly, if you don't have a camera, I think it's totally fine just to film on your phone. I think that the quality is usually still going to be pretty good with the phone, and I don't think that you really need to film things on the camera. It's just for me, since I do have a camera, I will film them, film them on my camera. And whenever I'm making a new project, I will usually just film myself working on the project from, me few, from a few different angles while I'm working on it, as well as when I finish it, I'll take some clips of it as well. And I think this is just a really easy, low effort way to actually make videos in the future. You can just pull all those clips that you filmed while making the piece and edit them together to make a cute little process video. You can also just reuse this clips, these clips in many contexts. You can use it for these process style sort of videos. You can use it in vlogs. You can use it in really simple, just B-roll type of, type of videos where you show a clip of yourself knitting and then put some text on the screen. I feel like you can use it for a lot of cases. So it's just always get good to get videos of yourself working on projects while you're making them. I also want to say for me personally, I usually use Premiere Pro to edit. This is because I already have the entire Adobe suite um, because I use it for a couple of different things in terms of YouTube and thumbnail editing, etc. So I just have had the Adobe Premiere suite for quite a while and that's why I use it for editing. But I do want to say I know it is a bit pricey. It is like a monthly subscription where you're paying a good amount of money per month to have the Adobe Premiere suite. So I totally understand if you don't already have Adobe products, then you might not want to actually get them just for the process of editing TikToks. And what I will say for this is that I have found that actually filming and editing within the TikTok app is going to work really well. You're going to be able to film different clips, edit them down, cut them down, add text. You can even add like pictures and things on top of your video. So I feel like it actually has the flexibility for you to be able to edit pretty much anything that you want to edit at this point in time. And I think they're also rolling out this feature where you can actually download the videos that you've edited before you post them and they won't have a watermark or anything so you can reuse them for other social media apps as well. The last topic I want to touch on, and I apologize if this video is insanely long because I do know that I've talked for quite a while, but the last topic that I want to touch on, which I think is pretty interesting, is monetization. So the thing that I want to say here is that I am not yet monetized on TikTok on my knitting account because I don't have 10,000 followers, which is how many followers you need to actually monetize on TikTok. I am actually monetized on my Swifty TikTok and I'm enrolled in the Creativity Beta program, which is the new TikTok monetization program that they're rolling out. I forget the name of the old program, but essentially the old program allowed you to monetize all of your videos, even really short videos. And I believe that that older program didn't pay as well as this newer program. The Creativity Beta program only allows you to monetize videos that are over a minute long. So that is going to be more of your like vloggy and talking style of videos. I have actually found on my Swifty account that I have been able to make a good amount of money from these videos. I actually don't think that I'm supposed to share screenshots of my dashboard showing how much money I've made from each of these videos. But what I will say is that I've seen the RPM on TikTok, which stands for revenue per mile. It essentially means how much money you're making per qualified video per 1000 views. It's around a dollar for me on my Swifty account, which means that if I had a video which had 10,000 qualified views, 
I would make $10 from it. Which means that if you have any of these longer form videos go viral, you can make a good bit of money from it. For example, if you had 100,000 views, you could make $100 from it and so forth. I do want to give a little note there, which is that I have found that long form videos are a little bit harder to have go viral. I feel like it's a little bit easier to have like a five second video do really well because people only need to watch for a few seconds for TikTok to sort of count that as like, a person who is interested in watching that video versus if you post a video that is like two minutes long, people need to watch a lot of the video for TikTok to actually sort of take that into account and say, okay, this video is interesting to people. On Instagram, I do wanna say there's a little bit of a history of different monetization programs. I believe they previously had a program called the Reels Bonus Program where you could make a certain amount of money from each reel that you posted. I think that I was only eligible for this Reels Bonus Program one time and it was uh, actually just before they like shut the program down. Essentially what they offered me was that I could post um, up to five reels in some amount of time. I forget how long it was. It might have been like a month and for each reel I could get $10 from posting it. So I got $50 from posting on this old monetization program. I think that other people might have had more money offered to them in terms of posting, but they got rid of that program and they recently introduced a new monetization program, which is more similar to TikToks in terms of it is just a revenue sharing program. So they will show ads to people who are watching Instagram Reels and then they will sort of split that revenue across all of the Reels that people are watching. That being said, I just recently signed up for this monetization program and I have not made much money from it at all. I actually had one video that had like 150,000 views that was eligible for this program and I think I made like a dollar and 50 cents from it. So I don't know if this is going to change in the future and will actually allow people to make more money through this program, but I have not really found that it has done very well so far. By the way, all of this information is as of August 2023. I know that monetization programs can totally change over time. If you even look at the monetization program from Instagram or from TikTok a couple of months ago, I think it would have been pretty different versus now. So I want to say take all this with a grain of salt. But what I want to say with both of these monetization programs is that I don't think they're really reliable ways to make money. I do think that with the TikTok monetization program, you can do pretty well and make a bit of money for yourself if you are consistently getting high views on these longer types of videos. But for Instagram, I you know don't think that I'm gonna be counting on Instagram anytime soon to give me any sort of money. Otherwise, you can also make videos from sponsorships, but I do have a whole other video talking about having sponsorships as a Fiverr artist, which I will link to. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, first of all, I really appreciate that. And second of all, I would appreciate if you commented down below what your favorite short-term um, platform is, either to watch content on or to post content on. Just comment if you prefer Reels, TikTok, or maybe even Shorts. If you enjoyed this video, you can also subscribe to me and turn on the bell notification to get notified every time that I post. Thank you guys again for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.